Okay, this is a short tutorial on using dubbing spinners. So this there's many different kinds. This is one with a bearing in it, but it has a very bad clip on top. This is the open kind, which is very nice for light materials like CDC and uh, synthetic dubbings. And then the traditional kind with a single hook, this is what I prefer. So, first we have to make a dubbing loop. So we'll just attach our tying thread to the hook shank. Remove that. Now what we want to do is we want to make the loop approximately the size that we need for the dubbing. You don't want a great distance from the hook shank to where the dubbing starts and you don't want a great distance from where the dubbing finishes to the spinner. Otherwise you'll be winding and winding. So we put our finger on and we loop this over the hook shank. Now you can determine by pulling on your bobbin or your finger how large the dubbing loop will be. So once we've decided this large we can lock that off with two turns around the hook shank. But if you see here, the loop is open. We don't want this, this has to be closed otherwise your materials will fall out. So what we do is we place our bobbin over the hook dubbing loop once like that and then we lock it off again and we go forward. Now you can see that it's closed at the top. So then we take our dubbing spinner and we place this on the loop. Let it slide down to the bottom, but we keep our finger in. Now we take a little dubbing. This is a synthetic natural blend. And you see I've left a little, just a short distance to the hook shank. We place this in. And you can use any kind of natural synthetic or a mixture. So once you've got enough in, Hold the dubbing in place, remove your finger, so the loop is closed. So then what you can do, is you can take your dubbing, as long as you keep the loop closed, it's not going to fall out, and you can distribute your dubbing how you wish to have it. Now we hang the bare thread on our finger, and we spin the dubbing loop, the dubbing spinner. And you can see what happens. So spin it a little and then if there's anything you don't like where there's too much or too long a hair you can pull it out. That's looking better. So then I'll give it another so there's a little bit of the synthetic material there, the antron. So I'll trim that off. Give it another spin just to tighten it up. That's good. Then what we can do is we take the dubbing spinner and use it as you would a hackle plier and we can wind our dubbing forward or if you have a rotary vise you can just wind it on like so. So once you've come to the end we can go over the dubbing loop to lock it off two or three times and then we hold it back and two or three times again then we can remove it and that's basically it. That's how to use a dubbing spinner and a dubbing loop. I have lots of other dubbing techniques. Watch the dubbing technique videos. Thanks for watching.